back into the car, slowly drive up further into the dark and into the woods. And while we were driving, he was silent, but he had a glow in his face, like he would still think about his personal paradise. And uh, there it was. Out of the darkness, all of a sudden, a clearance. And there was four to five trailers, and it was kind of blue and red and lots of skinny, skinny cats. Lots of them, actually. And the cooks, the cooks from the restaurant that never talked. It was quiet. It was silent. There was no sound. Just you could hear the barbecue with like curved ribs on them, some kind of meat. And the waitress. The waitress was there, too. So the old man offered me a place to stay. He said, well, if you don't want to stay in your car, which, you know, maybe not such a good idea, but you could still do it, you're more than welcome to be in my trailer. And then the waitress came and she was offering me food. She said, well, aren't you hungry, girl? I said, well, yeah, thank you. And she brought us ribs. We sat down on the trailer, on someone's trailer. And she asked me about Germany, about Europe, you know, about my life before uh, I lived in L.A. And uh, she would eat her ribs rather fast, actually, I realized. And she said, she heard the old man offering me his trailer. And she says, he does it all the time. She said, don't do it, girl. You know, you're, you're smart enough. Ain't safe. I wouldn't, you know, it's, uh, it's also a tiny place and, you know, you need your space. She said, but I can offer you my home. I have a place for you. I have a little room. You could get a good rest before you leave for your ride back home to Burning LA tomorrow.